How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Lumix Live. Uh, I'm Sean Robinson. If you've if you're joining us for the first time, um, my name is Sean Robinson. I am with Panasonic Lumix, and uh, this is our uh, weekly live stream that we do, uh, having conversations with photographers, videographers, industry members, all about you know topics that we get requests from you guys, the community. Uh, today is, is going to be a really fun conversation, um, mainly because I love when we talk about photography and, uh, you know, like the power of images and what you can get across with them. Uh, and I'm so happy to be joined again by Emma, uh, our Lumix ambassador, uh, who, uh, we last had on the stream with the G100. Uh, and we talked about a lot of, uh, her images there, but we've got, um, uh, bit of a different kind of uh, topic uh, as far as photography goes to discuss today. Uh, so again, if you are new to this stream, uh, make sure to tag at Lumix cameras in the uh, chat for YouTube. Uh, and we'll be addressing those questions as we go through. So feel free to drop them in there. Uh, if you're joining us from over on the Photo Plus Plus platform, uh, welcome. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have the chat open live on my screen here, but we have our team member Brandon over monitoring the questions that y'all might have over there. Uh, so if you do have questions over there, make sure to drop them in that chat for the Photo Plus Plus platform, uh, and Brandon will definitely be able to help you out over there. Uh, couple of other points. Um, if again, like I said, if you're new to this channel, this is the weekly event that we do. So make sure to get subscribed to the channel, uh, to check out all of these different videos we have. We have an entire playlist, uh, for Lumix live that covers every single stream that we've done save for, I think maybe one or two from when we first were doing these over on Facebook, but, uh, it's an entire archive of different topics and, uh, concepts that everyone, you know, kind of finds something that's incredibly useful for you guys there. Uh, if you have been joining us for a while, thank you so much for continuing to join us each week with these events. Uh, we have a lot more planned throughout the year, so there's going to be a lot of fun things coming on this channel. Uh, for the last housekeeping thing uh, I have to get out of the way here is uh, a bit of a plug for the Lumix Pro Services uh, system that we have. Uh, if you are an existing Lumix camera owner, uh, in the United States at least, um, is what I can speak for uh, as a U.S. representative here, uh, if you are someone who owns the Lumix S series or even the G series, excuse me, G series, uh, we have multiple levels of the Lumix Pro service available to you now. There is the red tier, which is a free service. So all you do is log on to the website. We'll make sure to drop that down in the chat. Uh, all you do is log on to the website, register for it. You get a, uh, a membership card, and then that also gets your warranty, all that kind of fun stuff set up. Uh, but we do also have a platinum service, which offers... Uh, quicker turnaround times, you get a welcome kit that's got a really, really cool uh, uh, camera strap in there, which, I mean, if you're like any photographer, you've probably gone through a hundred different camera straps to find the right one. Uh, but it also gives you a lot of other really cool benefits like sensor cleanings and all that fun stuff. Uh, that one actually has a specific promotion running right now, uh, again, at least for the U.S. customers, where uh, the requirements to get into it camera-wise are much, much lower. I believe right now it is uh, one Lumix S series body qualifies you so you can jump in. So we'll uh, leave a link in the chat for that for you guys to take a look at that. All right, that's enough of the, the sales pitch fun stuff there. So um, let's actually get this conversation going with Emma. So how are you doing, Emma? Hi, I'm good. I am in Sweden right now. It's dark outside and around zero degrees Celsius. We have some <laughs> snow and uh, yeah. Nice, nice. So yeah, it's it's uh, been a little while since we uh, we uh, had you on the session here, and I apologize if anybody hears the dog barking in the outside. There's a <laughs> golf cart driving by. So, um, <laughs> I. It's been a while since we had you on last time, uh, and obviously we talked mm -hmm. about the G100, but yeah. Uh, before before we go, you know, kind of into the whole topic and everything, could you give uh, those that are joining us kind of a background, who you are, what kind of photography you do, and, and you know, kind of what you're up to? Yeah, so my name is Emma. I come from Sweden. I live 50% uh, of my time in my van traveling around the world, uh, climbing mountains and taking photos. And the other 50% in Stockholm where I do fashion photography. 
portraits, lifestyle and commercial stuff. But I started my career shooting uh, rock stars uh, concerts and uh, founded an agency for that when I was 20 years old. That's still around today. And I also do a little bit of uh, writing about photography and um, doing photo workshops and photo tours and stuff like that. So a little bit of everything when it comes to photography. That's awesome. That's awesome. I know, um, uh, you know, kind of going back to that G100 video we did, you know, talking about the mountain climbing and the whole project yeah. and the process with that. It was definitely, um, definitely one of those things that if, if you've, never gone out to try to like actually conquer something like that. Um, there was some really cool insight you provided there and we'll, mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll, we'll put a link up to that video there as well as, um, I was actually watching, uh, today, uh, as you know, I was getting prepared for the conversation today. I was watching, um, actually the video you put up, I think it was April last year about the climbing Everest in, and oh, I, yeah. I, I cannot pronounce yeah. the name of the, the mountain or the hill. But, <laughs> But um, yeah, like like the, a lot of that that content, uh, you know, it's it's so cool to see um, that side of of the photographers and videographers that we talk about, you know, and, and talk with mm -hmm. um, that maybe doesn't necessarily deal direct with photography. But um, I, we'll also link some of that stuff there too, because uh, if anyone's into outdoor activities, if you like, you know, getting out and being active, definitely check out a lot of Emma's other stuff outside of. The photo stuff that we're talking about, which um, yeah. it's kind of actually... funny because on my Instagram, you can only see my passion. Like it's photos from beautiful places and mountains and climbing and all that stuff. But my job is what we're going to talk about today. The things I actually do for a living as a photographer, stuff like that, that you will show us today. Yeah. So um, with that, let's actually let's actually jump into that conversation. So, knowing your background with fashion and, and portraiture, um, the whole the whole project, um, the the portrait project about diversity, where where did the original idea come from to to start this project? So, actually, Lumix told me we have a new lens. We want you to try it out and create us some photos and. Uh, it's so rare that you get this opportunity to do anything you want. Uh, so that's really luxurious. And I was thinking, okay, what do I want to do? And it's been a year where you have almost met no one. You know, we've been uh, in lockdowns or we've been trying to have social distancing, avoiding people and everything. So I was missing these portrait sessions. So I, I was trying to figure out a way, how can I photograph as many people as possible over two days and do it in a safe way. So we scheduled one person each 15 minutes in a big studio that had a lot of different rooms. So you could put people in a different room if someone came at the wrong time to the studio. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think it was just like, I was longing for, for taking photos of people because I've been missing that the whole year. And I wanted to do it as much as possible within this project as I could because um, I just missed it so much. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think uh, every photographer that, that at least I've spoken to has felt some sort of that kind of disconnect and that desire to go back into something that, you know, you're passionate about or that sparks, you know, conversation or really yeah. anything like that. Um, so Can with, I also add something? Yeah. Yeah. And another point to this project also, because I think it's an important one to show the diversity of the people that I photograph. So I photographed 85 people over two days in the studio uh, with a new 85 millimeter lens. And um, I mean, I come from the fashion world and the fashion world was for a long time just showing the same people in photos over and over and over again. And this actually started to change a couple of years ago. And it's the people who demanded this change. And it's so impressive to see how this affected the whole world and how actually the brands and the people working in the industry listen to this. And they try to become better at showing diversity. And for me, it was important to also contribute in my way to this. Um, actually, I gave away all the uh, money I got from doing this project to a charity to 
just because it was a nice way to do something better for the world. Especially when you when you work in the, in the environment that I work in within fashion, it feels nice to sometimes do a project that actually feels really good in your heart too, you know? It's not just the surface, it's, it's meaningful, for real. Yeah, yeah, and it, once, once, you know, like when we were in the planning process for the Lumix Live, you know, kind of schedules, this project came up and it was really like, it, it, it was so cool to see a project like this. One that it's, um, you know, kind of like I said before, as far as Panasonic goes, something that's actually so dedicated to photography as a topic. Um, that yeah. was always a big push for me. But then hearing and reading the story um, before it was published so we could get ready for this, uh, you know, it was definitely, definitely heartening to see that that approach and and how how you use photography for capturing all those people and connecting and telling a story about a person um when when it actually like came time to actually execute this this project mm -hmm. um obviously you touched on it before there obviously are a lot of challenges right now with getting a ton of people together so what yeah. what kind of process did you go through to collect all of these people to reach out to them and then actually get them into the studio? Um, how, how did that process so, work? Um, I think I had like two weeks or something like that to do the casting. And I was aiming to shoot maybe 40 or 50 people in the studio over two days. I had some help from my assistant. We worked together as a team and we just, you know, I scrolled through who am I following on social media? Who are my friends on Facebook? Who can I photograph? And we made a plan like, oh, we want someone that is old, someone who is young, someone who's a child, uh, people from different parts of the world, you know, we were trying to cover as many different types of people we could think about, you know? And then when it was a few days until I was actually going to photograph this project, the Swedish governments put in new bans and new <laughs> rules, <laughs> which meant that this whole project was in danger. It maybe couldn't even happen, you know? So a lot of people had to cancel if they were like in a risk group or just, you know, a little bit worried or wanted to follow the laws in our country. Uh, but we went on with it anyway, and we made sure that um, we were just a few people in the studio. It was basically me and my assistant. And then uh, we scheduled everyone to come every 15 minutes. There's a new person there. And then I had to be super quick, uh, do a photo shoot with someone in just 15 minutes. And the good thing about shooting with this lens is that when you shoot with an 85 millimeter lens, you don't have to stay that close to the person you're shooting. You can actually be a few meters away. So we could keep the social distancing in the studio. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, that's, that's obviously, um, you know, when, when it comes down to equipment, I mean, that's, that's lucky that in this case, because of the lens, it, you know, aids in that, in that, um, you know, kind of distance there. But, um, Going a little bit on on the technical side, as a yeah. as a as as a portrait photographer, um, outside of a project like this, what what focal lengths do you typically, you know, kind of enjoy to work with for portraits? Is eighty five a normal lens that you would be working with for portraiture? No, actually not, because I'm a big fan of zoom lenses, and a twenty four seventy lens is basically what's on my camera most of the time. Um, but I enjoyed challenging myself, trying out a new lens, one that I couldn't zoom with, you know, and have to, you know, think new when I photograph. I love doing that from time to time, actually. And uh, it's like you develop as a photographer because you can't go to your regular stuff, the basics you usually always go to. It's like you have to have a different process. And that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you know, the, the, we're going to jump over and take a look at the images in a, in a minute here. And, um, I, I think it definitely shows a, a, you know, kind of total understanding of your craft because you're able to jump in and make those kinds of changes. But obviously, you know, you get, you get some very different stylistic looks when it comes to, you know, going from zoom lens to fixed focal length with compression yeah. and all that kind of fun stuff. But, um, for those that are looking at this kind of this conversation from a, a, well, portraits, that's what I want to take, you know, how, how would I go about setting it up? Mm -hmm. um, 
in in the studio that you had, um, obviously it's was shot with a Lumix camera. You have that eighty five millimeter. What kind yeah. of lighting did you use for for the general shooting? So I wanted to create like a classic portrait look. Um, the, I used uh, two studio flashes with um, a softbox on, so I had this really soft light, and uh, I had one from the side, like forty five degrees. Uh, classic Rembrandt light in the face, you know, with a little uh, triangle of light here and the shadow in the face. But to not have it too dramatic and to have a wider range for people to move around in the lighting, I also had the second uh, studio lights more in front of the person, like on the side, not that angled as my Rembrandt light. That was the headlight. But I had one fill light just next to it, more from the front, just to lighten up the shadows a little bit and give people some more space to move around in the spot. Um, and it's actually a really nice, flattering portrait light. I love it. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, you know, there's there's always something cool about seeing just straightforward, you know, not over the top done portraiture. And I think this this project is definitely one of the the better examples I've ever seen of, of that kind of approach to, to shooting. So um, let's actually, there we go. Um, let's actually take a look at some of these images. So um, for those that are uh, following over on uh, the YouTube channel, uh, the link for this, uh, this article is on our, uh, sorry, in the description below. So uh, you can jump over and take a look at these without the YouTube compression and all that kind of fun junk that, always makes things look maybe a little less desirable through compression. But, um, so we're, we're taking a look at the image here and you know, the, the first shot that you had up here or that, that was used in this article, you know, it kind of just shows that the, the studio you're in that, that setup with, with that, the, the background choices, it's, it's, I don't know. So something just refreshing instead of those, like I said before, those over the top, portraits mm -hmm. that that can be distracting um so can you give us some some like design choices like why why this kind of background like was there a particular reason for it oh, i i love this background it's an old uh hand painted background you know like they used in the studios back in the days and i was going for this classic but modern look in my photos and actually, I had a dress code also for everyone. Um, I told them to come dressed in white because I wanted something to unite all these people. I ended up shooting 85 people over these two days. And uh, I wanted to have like a red thread uh, between the photos at the same time as I created a unique portrait for each person. And the challenge with that was that I only had 15 minutes with each person, you know. and. Uh, a few of them I photographed, I knew from before. A few I never met before. We street casted people to, to this project. So it was, um, it was just, you know, the plan from the beginning to have this classic look, something that's a red thread, and then show so many different personalities as I could possibly photograph over this time I had. Hmm. Yeah. So um, let's actually, you know, kind of um, pick out a couple of the images here and, and um, if we can talk about it, if um, you can give us some some background into it. So yeah. um, we'll start with the first one here. Um, yeah, this is my friend Julia. She's a climber too. And she has chalk on her hands, you know, like you put on your hands before you climb a route in the gym or outside. And... Uh, She's only in a sports bra because that's how she's dressed like 90% of the time because she's always hanging out at the crag or in the gym and she's a super tough and cool girl. So I wanted to try to capture her like that, but also quite feminine, you know, like get a sensitive side out of her too. Yeah. No, and I, again, I, that's, that's again, that, that, that cool thread that I I've seen through these images is, is it's, it's who the person is. It's not about styling. It's, it's, it's who yeah. the person is. And you get yeah. that feeling from an image like this. Mm. Um, okay. So let's, um, what about this one? Can you give us a little background it's on this one. <laughs> 
And she told me, I have a white cat, should I bring it? And I was like, yeah, for sure, let's do that. And that was just wonderful to have a portrait with her and the cat. And she's, you know, working with high fashion clients all the time in the fashion industry in Sweden. So she had this uh, couture dress by a cool designer and she was probably the most fashionable girl on set these days. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Now, uh, how about this, this one? Okay. So this is two twins. They are cousins of my assistant. I never met them before. I don't think they ever done a photo shoot before either. They are 14 years old. So if it's the first time you photograph someone, you just want to make them feel comfortable. And uh, since they are twins, I obviously wanted them to have like the same look on their faces. And uh, you could, so you can actually see that, oh, this is almost the same person. So I wanted to capture them like in a pose where they were close together. So I, that, that actually brings up a good point. So when, when someone's new coming into a studio, how do you approach, you know, kind of getting that person comfortable? Because obviously not everyone's comfortable, you know, no. getting their portrait taken. No, they're not. And uh, I try to be calm and just, you know, go through what's going to happen, like inform everyone okay, this is what we're going to do. It's going to work like that. And I always assure them, like, don't worry in front of the camera. I'm going to help you. And then I give a lot of feedback when I photograph. So when I photograph, it sounds something like, oh, yes, that's super good. Okay, turn a little bit to the left. Yes, hold that pose. Perfect. Thank you. And then you can try to just lean your head a little bit like that. Yes, super nice. And I just give a lot of positive feedback to make them feel good about themselves at the same time as I direct them so they know what to do. And I always try to tell them like, feel free to move around a little bit by yourself and try to explore and yeah, you know, just try something. If you come up with an idea too, it's like a creative change that's going on here. You know, it's not just me behind the camera. It's also about you bringing something. So it's about exchanging energy too, you know? If I don't have energy on my photo shoot, I'm not gonna capture energy from the person I photograph either. So that's very important, like how you behave and how you are as a photographer when you photograph other people. If you photograph like a rock or a car, it doesn't matter what mood you're in as a photographer because it's not gonna affect the outcome of the photo because it's a dead, thing you're photographing but when you shoot yeah. a person it's super important to find this energy between you two and just you know give energy to get energy back yeah so um we actually have a question that just came in from uh over at the photo plus plus uh platform yeah. um so the the question is it says um the the person comments that they really like the classic portraiture look uh, but they're wondering if this style portrait wouldn't seem quote unquote too plain to get attention at, you know, for small social media sizes. Um, and the um, question really comes in is, was that even a concern for this project? No, it, it, it wasn't something I was thinking about because I didn't create this for social media to get likes or to get a banger that would, you know, get a lot of shares or something. <laughs> The important thing for me when I did this project was to create something that had a great value, like it meant something, it, um, you know, came from the heart and it was something that I was passionate about doing. And in the beginning, I was like, maybe I can do an exhibition with this project. But then obviously, due to the circumstances <laughs> we're in, it's not happened yet. But who knows, maybe in the future. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've, I've said it a lot, you know, through the conversation so far, but it, to me, portraiture like this and photography like this is so refreshing to see these days because everyone, for better or worse, there is always that push and some, you know, kind of creep into projects of, well, you know, how can I maximize this for mass market? And it, yeah. it has its place to, to, you know, create portraiture and, and to create images that way. But when you see a project that is done for the project and not yeah. to go chase likes and things like that, I, th I think that's a big message a lot of people should maybe take away from a lot of the images that that you've captured here. Um, 
let's see here. Uh, what are the kind of questions we have? <laughs> oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I just said that was well said. Yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see here. Uh, so we got one of the questions. Uh, it's a more, it's another technical question actually, but the question mm -hmm. here was, um, so why for your lens preferences, why do you prefer zoom lenses over primes? Is there a kind of general reason behind that or? Uh, yeah, because that's what I started with, you know, when I was shooting concerts, because you need to be flexible because you're in the photo pit and the person is running around on the stage and you can barely move, so you need to be able to follow this person wherever it's going, you know? And then I started doing fashion and it was also very good for shooting fashion jobs, like you can move around in the studio, you can go close, you can zoom in, you can zoom out. And you have everything you need in one lens for that. But of course, if I'm going to do a photo with a certain look, like I want that, uh, focus that to be short and I want the background to be blurry then of course I will use um, a fixed zoom uh, a fixed lens I don't use a zoom lens for that uh, but otherwise it's just because it's easier for me with the flexibility to work with the zoom lens yeah and that's that's definitely for for anyone that's been you know creating images for a long you know for for a decent amount of time now I mean that's that's a I I feel a a luxury that we as photographers in the modern time have because it used to be like, you know, prime lenses were the sharp lenses you went to. Those were the best, you yeah. know, the best ones to go to. You wouldn't really ever take a zoom lens until uh, I'd say probably what around like the nineties when they <laughs> actually started to get like, okay, yeah, no, this was a good lens I could use. So yeah. I think, I think people these days are, are, are a bit spoiled for choice with um, we are <laughs> <laughs> we're so bored today compared to like i started photographing you know when analog became digital like in the beginning of 2000 and uh, i was actually learning the skill in the dark room uh, but then i went out and i got myself a digital camera and the quality compared to today was just not good at all it was horrible <laughs> so we are really for today yeah oh yeah so um yeah let's let's uh, uh continue on with some of these images here so um how about this one Can you give us some background it's on a, this one? A designer and he makes the most stunning pieces in uh, iron actually uh in in the garage and create this uh, you know interior design for um shops and uh offices and stuff like that so you know when you scroll through your friends list uh on facebook you try to find interesting people uh people you don't look for who's gonna look good in the photos you look for who is an interesting person to have on this project who will add something to this project you know that's what i was looking for yeah no it, that's that's awesome you know as it, the, there's there's again like that that simplicity to the lighting to the 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 feeling from this that you know you you get that feeling that you know it's it's a well put together person they probably have some sort of detail oriented aspect in their life was what i saw when i first saw this so hearing that it yeah. you know that he's a designer <laughs> it fits right in with that initial mental picture i had of who this person probably yeah. was so yeah oh. that's it's it's so cool to actually hear the stories behind these yeah. Um, uh, just as a reminder, everybody, if you have questions for Emma, um, drop them in the comments. Uh, if you're over on the Photo Plus uh, page, Brandon is bringing them over here to uh, YouTube. So thank you very much, Brandon uh, and Jack, for monitoring the questions in YouTube as well. Um, okay. So uh, how about how about um, uh, this person here? Uh, this is actually an ex-boyfriend's little sister, and um, <laughs> we became really good friends during my ex boyfriends and mine relationship this was 10 years ago and uh, then we just kept seeing each other every now and then she looks cool you know she works in the music industry booking bands and uh, uh, she has these cool tattoos and she came to the studio I told everyone like you can bring an accessory or something personal if you want to um, and she brought a bag of knives <laughs> and I was like oh this is maybe too brutal I'm gonna shoot you out the knives okay <laughs> 
and she was just dressed in this big oversized men's shirt and uh, she was just looking so relaxed and cool at the same time nice yeah. she's an cool. exciting person. yeah <laughs> Uh, all right. How about um? How about this this person? Oh, he's also a designer, fashion designer, and he makes the most beautiful couture clothes. I mean, I would love to own one piece from him one day, you know. And uh, he's just unique in Sweden, so colorful and have his own style. And uh, I mean, all his clothes he makes is just popping with colors. So to have him dressed in white is almost like, oh, that's too bad. It's sad, but. Uh, I love this photo of him because um, every time I see it, it makes me wonder what is he thinking about because there's so much in his eyes, in his face, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, having that, that subtle, um, the, 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 the lighting again, being subtle and deliberate with the lighting, it, it's, it's amazing how, you know, not overdoing it, not going over stylized can just really emphasize and, and push that kind of feeling and reaction from a, a viewer where you're looking at the image and, and, you know, you, you have that exact visceral reaction of, I really wonder what this person is thinking about at this moment. Like, you know, what, what is going through, through this person's head? And a lot of times, again, because of lighting, they, they, it kind of gets glossed over because then it becomes very easy to look at a picture and be like, Oh, well, you know, that light has to be over here and look at the shadow <laughs> detail, stuff like that. It's like, no, that's, that's not what a portrait's always about. That's the thing. If you do that, you fade with a portrait because the portrait is all about bringing out someone's personality. If you think about the form, if you think about the lightning, the composition, the technique, um, then your portrait isn't any good. You know, that's the thing because, it's about bringing out the personality to tell about this person that you're photographing. That's the whole idea of a portrait. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, that's, that's, that's definitely sound, um, sound, sound advice for, for anybody that's getting into portraiture, especially, especially if anyone's hitting like a plateau where it's like, you just start getting bored because it's yeah. the same looks over and over again, do something ultra stripped down and basic that, you know, tells the story, lets the image speak for itself. Um, yeah. So the this is the last image that's up on the the uh, page. Um, could you yeah. give us background on this this uh, person? Yeah, this guy wasn't even supposed to be on the photo shoot. He was just coming along because uh, his girlfriend was going to have her photo taken. And uh, his girlfriend is a dancer. I used her once before for the photo I created for an exhibition. And then she told me during the photo shoot, because I told her, like, can you dance a little bit for me? And she said, oh, you should see my boyfriend dance. And I was immediately curious. And I was like, oh, so he's a dancer too. And she was like, yeah, he's out in the sofa in the other room. And I was like, you should bring him in here. And then he was stealing the show, actually. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just dancing, really expressing himself like big gestures and big expressions. And not everyone is comfortable doing that in front of a camera. So I loved shooting this guy. Like, I certainly want to do a photo project with these dancers again one day, you know? It was a oh, lot, yeah. a lot of fun for me. Um, I mean, I photographed a lot of people over the years. And many photo shoots I've done with big stars like Ed Sheeran or lord or anyone you know you have two minutes in a hotel room and you can't really do anything and they have their photo poses and everything is going to be approved by an agent before it gets published and so many rules to it you know so to just be free to create with someone who's also creative in the studio that's an amazing moment and it's this that i'm looking for when i do portrait photography actually just that feeling of creating something together with someone and that's what i think i actually had the blessing to do in this photo shoot awesome awesome so with with projects like this you know obviously um like you're saying there was the goal 
to photograph, um, I think, what was it originally? You wanted to photograph 100 or was it always 85? No, 40, 40, 50 people was the goal from the beginning. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> and then it ended up being 85, if you include the dogs and the cats. <laughs> And that was pretty cool because it was uh, a project with 85 millimeter lens. And I didn't even count it until afterwards when I discovered this. So that was pretty cool, yeah. Nice. So, um, you know, obviously with with a project, um, you know, and, and, and an undertaking like this, obviously there are going to be some questions that, that people have uh, about, you know, the actual process of going through it so for each of the the um people that you photographed mm -hmm. you know do you do you go through the typical process of you know kind of like uh uh the term is escaping my brain right now uh model releases and things like that when you're working on a project like this yeah yeah we had a um, we had a model release it was very nice because i don't like these impossible contracts where you're going to give all your rights away you know so it was like common benefits they can use the photos for themselves uh, however they like and i sent everyone like 10 15 images each so it was a big job editing uh like almost a thousand pictures <laughs> or maybe more than a thousand pictures actually um in the small little time frame I had, uh, but I feel like they did me um, a service coming to do this project because uh, obviously when you photograph that many people, you don't have a budget that can cover a model fee for everyone. So everyone oh, yeah. did it free, including me, and we gave the whole budget for charity. So it was amazing that people came for this and were a part of the project. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 really really awesome to see, and I think um, uh, yeah. so. You donated it to Two Helping Hands was the project that yeah, it was donated to. Exactly, the helping refugees in Moria in Greece. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so after you've had all of these images, and you know you you've got everything you know kind of collected, what mm -hmm. what's your your kind of process of actually you know, kind of culling the images, getting them together, and then and then going through the edit process. Were there things that you looked for specifically um, as you were through no, the editing process? Um, I was looking for the best photo of each person. Um, the photo that I thought added to the whole project, but also like brought out the most personality for this person, you know? And um, then all the other photos, like when I when I do a photo job and I have thousands and thousands of photos to go through, I quickly scroll through and I give everyone that has potential like a rating. And then I look through those ratings to figure out which ones am I actually going to edit. And I was pretty generous, so I edited like 10 to 15 photos each uh, of each person. So. Uh, yeah, it was a lot. And then after I edited the photos, then I made a final selection for which photo am I going to present in the project? Because I thought it would be too much if it was more than one picture per person, you know? So I was trying to get some diversity between, you know, like full body shots and close ups and people together, people that were just by themselves and everything. Yeah. Nice. So, um, you know, kind of the, the, the last, I, I guess, question that I, that I have specifically about this project is yeah. when, when all was said and done with the project, um, you know, kind of, how do you go from, from a project like this that has obviously such a, a kind of freedom to it, to being able yeah. to create the way you want you know, what, what do you do as a photographer going from a project like this to back to like the standard run of the mill, you know, kind of job? Is there any kind of like change that happens as you're going through that from project to project? Mm. I don't know if I have a good answer to that one because uh, <laughs> I'm so used to life being so full of contrast. Like, one day you're on top of a mountain, the next day you're shooting some high class event in New York, and the third day 
you're in Sweden shooting a campaign and you know it's like life is just happening and you just go with the flow and uh, it's not hard for me to to be flexible um, with photography with life and everything and actually this has been a very slow quite boring year because of obvious reasons so I think after this project I just went to the spa for a day and just took it easy you know because it takes a lot of you to be in the photo studio from early in the morning to late in the evening photographing 85 people in two days so after that you just need to check out for a while and just get reset and restored and gain your energy back because you're drained you know you're you're physically and emotionally drained because you give all your energy when you do the photo shoot like this and uh, then you just have to recover and get back to editing process, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, that's, that's, that's something cool. So, um, let's see here. Uh, just looking at the questions, I apologize for the, the, the yeah. blank stare at a computer screen here. <laughs> um, Chaz, will we will get to your question at the end at the, the last section of it. Um, uh, because it's yeah it's it's a bit more technical um so so Chaz is asking about um the uh, mm -hmm. s1 s1r on focus performance and thoughts on improving success rate and images um unless there's there's any any um you know particular feeling you have about you know the the focusing performance of the cameras for the project that you had yeah so this was actually shot with s5 uh because it was pretty new uh when i did this project I did a project in the beginning of November, so they wanted me to try the S5. And I think it was a great combination. I really liked the S5 to work with that. Um, I have to be honest and say, when I first held this lens in my hand, I was like, oh, it's so light. And I was scared because other times when I worked with a light uh, lens, it meant it's slow, the focus isn't that great. And it got me worried. I was like, oh, my God, how, how is this going to perform over these two days, you know? Yeah. But then I started photographing with it, and it was just amazing. And I was super happy that it was that light because I'm really into light gear because I'm always on the go carrying something, and if it's not too heavy, then I'm happy. So over the years, I come to like light stuff more and more. And if you have a light lens that actually performs really well, then it's like, I'm sold. And uh, yeah, I was super impressed with the focus on the lens. It was fast, it was sharp, and that's just the way you like it, you know? That's the way you need it to be. Not only to do a project like this, but every time you should have, should have portraits, you know? Yeah. And uh, so so for those that are uh, watching, the 85, uh, it is the new newer lens that we released for the S series. Um, I don't have the availability information. I know that's going to be one of the next questions, but definitely for everyone that's, you know, kind of uh, chomping at the bit to, to get this lens, make sure to just follow the social channels and your dealers um, where you, where, where you purchase your uh, photographic equipment um, should be available very soon, if not already available. Um so uh, let's hear. Yeah, the, the uh, question that you asked, I don't have an answer to that question since I shot, shot with a S5. Yeah. 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 And uh, so for, for Chaz, um, you know, I guess uh, when it comes to, since obviously, I, well, let me, let me read Chaz's question. This is uh, per, perhaps not related only to the studio shoot, but other shoots. How do you see the S1, S1R on focusing performance? Any thoughts on improving success rate and image sharpness? Um, for for studio shooting, it's it's usually, at least in my experience, focusing is not necessarily one of the harder pressed things with the Lumix cameras across the board. Um, when a lot of times what I notice is people tend to shoot uh, in a studio, they shoot so wide open with lenses that a out of focus or a keeper rate tends to actually fall more on just a missed focus point. You know, it's not necessarily out of focus. The camera focused where you told it to focus, but the selection of that point may have been wrong or not wrong. May have just been not, not the optimal location. So I guess actually the question I would have for you, Emma, is 
when you're shooting portraiture, mm. what what kind of um, is is there a kind of set area in your head where you like to keep your aperture for specifically relating to this, this portrait project, you know, like where, what kind of yeah. thoughts went through your head for aperture? So it depends completely on the look I want in the picture. And since I wanted this to be portrait and not fashion, uh, I would go with a wider aperture. So I was alternative between 1.8 and up to 3.5, maybe four even, depending on if it was, one or two people or a dog in the picture. So you needed a little bit uh, longer depth of focus. But usually when I shoot fashion, I shoot on a portrait eight um, because I don't want that portrait look that you get with uh, the, you know, the blurry background and everything. Um, so yeah, for this project, it was more open and more blurry in the background. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so then, um, you know, kind of continuing that, that kind of process there for, for Chaz, um, you know, that's, a, that's one of the things that, that will come with, with, as you're working with, with the cameras, you know, what style are you looking to photograph with the mm -hmm. ultra shallow depth of field will pose additional challenges for nailing focus. You know, are yeah. you a hundred percent positive that you're, you know, dead on the eyes? Um, yeah. you know, but how I much does your... Yep, for many years, you know, shooting concerts and get the focus in the right place when it's dark and someone is moving around, it's pretty hard, you know? So in a studio, uh, I nail it all the time. Unless, as you said before, I accidentally put the focus point in the wrong location, you know? And that can <laughs> happen, you know? If you have the touch screen, it can happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so, you know, you know, with... With working at it, you know, I, I, I've always been of the the practice, at least from how I was taught studio photography, um, you know, starting with film and going up was, you know, usually I, I guess I would approach it more of that fashion style where it was, and I'm not calling myself a fashion photographer by any stretch of the mm -hmm. imagination, but the, the thought process that, you know, F5, 6, F8, sometimes F11, those were the, the apertures that I typically would stick to because mm -hmm. you get the full head in focus. You get that, yeah. you know, that advantage there. And then obviously with strobes, you get the much sharper looking image. So it's, it's a complicated process, uh, Chaz, for really upping your success rate for image sharpness. I, one of the first things I advise everybody is if you are serious about portrait photography or studio photography, get strobes. Constant lighting will never produce as sharp of an image as a strobe can. Um, I don't know if, if, if you feel the same, Emma. Yeah, it, it, I agree with you. And also, um, it's hard to get the amount of light you need. Uh, you have to raise your eyes pretty high when you shoot just with uh, fixed lamps or lights, you know. Uh, but with a strobe, you can almost always be on ISO 100 or maybe 200. Um, let's see here. Let's, um, let's, uh, FC photo, one of our, uh, regulars on the Lumix live, uh, yeah. uh, videos here, uh, has a question uh, for you. It's when shooting portraits, do you point the camera from waist level, chest level, face level? Like what, what consideration goes into your framing position? That's very individual to the person I photograph. Like, I think it's really cool to shoot a little bit lower and up to create like a, more cool look of the person but not everyone fits in that angle you know so sometimes you have to be a little bit over and usually when i do portraits and fashion it's like the more of the body i have of the person i'm photographing in the picture the lower i am so like if i shoot full body i'm on my knees uh, if i shoot half body i'm standing bent and if i shoot just a portrait i'm standing up but for this project, I worked around with my angles all the time. Like sometimes I was lying on the floor, sometimes I was standing on the chair. Uh, it was super individual to the person I was photographing. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Um, let's see here. Uh, Chaz asking, uh, how do you? Tr how do you? 
the uh, I'm sorry, Chaz. The question is written a little funny. Um, it as it's written, it says, "How do you the trade of wide open versus slow shutter speed and stabilization with strobes?" I think, uh, and and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Chaz. Obviously, in the chat, um, when you're shooting with strobe, um, are do you typically stick to the fast shutter sync speed for strobe, or do you play around with slow speed shutter and um, maximizing? Not so much slow speed shutter, unless I want that look, you know? But it also depends on how much of the natural light do I want in the photo. Like when I photograph lifestyle on location, I used to want to bring in a little bit of the light in the room in the photo too. But for this particular shoot, I was shooting at um, 160, about 160 seconds, a split second. Um, uh, which is pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, um, ho yeah, ho hopefully that, that was, um, the answer you were looking for Chaz. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's see here. We got, we got a couple of minutes left, um, before we're going to uh, wrap it up for today. But, um, so wanted to, to basically just, just kind of maybe a little bit away from, from the, the portrait project, but are there any, um, you know, kind of other projects that you're starting to work on that you want to share or um, kind of get people excited about? Yeah, so I'm actually doing a super big project um, this spring, and I can't say what it is, but it's huge. And again, it's like I have the freedom to create whatever I want. And this is so rare and so luxurious as i said in the beginning uh, so i'm super excited about that i'm writing on the idea right now and um, then i i spend a lot of time ice climbing and skiing too right now you know you have to take the opportunity when it's cold outside and there's snow um so tomorrow i'm going up north in sweden with my van uh, for the weekend to do some ski touring try out my new ski boots and just you know Try to have fun and take some photos just for fun. And if something is good enough, maybe it goes to my Instagram. And then next week I do a photo shoot for a client. Uh, it's a car company establishing itself. Uh, they are like renting out cars or leasing cars or whatever. And they have a, we're doing a lifestyle photo shoot for this, for their um, marketing. And then I'm going to photograph a Swedish artist on Wednesday. And... Right when that uh, photo shoot is done, I'm back up north in Sweden, skiing and ice climbing, and then I'm coming back again for next week, and we'll see what happens then. Yeah, I'm going to record that. Um, I, I do this video uh, show about working as a photographer. It's in Sweden, Swedish, unfortunately, so we, if, unless there's any Swedish-speaking people in the audience, it might not interest you, but it's the third season, and it's all about how to succeed as working as a photographer. This is something I'm really passionate about, helping others. And um, I'm actually giving away a lot of photo jobs that I get to other photographers. And I've been doing that for a couple of years now, um, just because I think when you look at um, other photographers, I don't see them as competition. I see them as colleagues and I want to help people. I feel confident enough in my position in the photography world in Sweden. And I think it's just fun if more people can, you know, create a living uh, out of photography and have a chance to get a foot in, you know, into the industry and the business. So that's also a big passion I have. And that's something I'm working with uh, this uh, winter. Very awesome. Very awesome. That's that's definitely oh. a, a, a very welcomed, uh, you know, kind of change of of opinion in the industry you know not not everyone out yeah. there is is direct competition and if if no. more people get into this and have an opportunity to grow in photography the better our industry does as a whole yeah exactly and i know when i started off as a young photographer um, i mean i would love to have a chance of someone to help me or mentor me or something like that you know instead you have to figure everything out by yourself and really fight for it you know it was hard I was probably the only girl around in the photo pit that was, I was going to say I was the only woman when I was young. And it was just really hard to to be taken serious and to get anywhere, you know, in the beginning. So 
I want to pay back to all the young photographers out there and do my part to help them instead of shutting off and shutting down and make sure that no one gets anywhere, you know. I, I don't think that's very nice or humble at all. And uh, I think the world is just better if we work together, you know, instead of against each other. Yeah. No, I, that's 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 a a a, uh, uh, a thought. I think everybody should take away across the board as we the 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 conversations that 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 I always have with with all all of the photographers that I've I've interacted with uh, over mm. the Lumix Live platform. You know, they, everything there, there's there's always that little bit of you know kind of life advice that comes out of a lot of these <laughs> sessions and. Yeah. Uh, I, I I can easily say the the last time that that, that we had a, a chat here and this time it was probably the most impactful of that advice I think mm -hmm. I've heard from from a photographer about the industry and 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 just having a better world around us. So um, yeah. I want to wrap this up today. Um, I'm going to just jump over here. Um, so for everybody that wants to follow Emma uh, and check out more of her work. Uh, there is a link in the description below that drops to the uh, profile page on Panasonic.com. Uh, this is the global uh, site for all of our ambassadors. Everyone's up on that page. So definitely go over, take a look at this site, check out some of Emma's other work. Um, she's an amazing photographer, as you guys have seen. Uh, and yeah, keep keep following um, everything that she's doing and, and keep... Um, bringing those questions out to all of us. Um, with that, I want to thank you, Emma, for taking the time and uh, uh, joining us again this week. Um, this was an awesome conversation. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to join you for a conversation. <laughs> yeah. uh, so let's see. Um, so I want to, uh, again, thank all of you guys for joining us and having conversations with us, chatting, um, you know, kind of getting, getting everything across that, that, that you guys have for all of us to, to talk about. Uh, as a reminder, uh, we are live every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern time uh, for uh, these live sessions. Uh, next week, I believe, is on actually the mobile app. So we're going back to a little bit more of a technical-oriented uh, stream next week. Uh, but we will be back again with some more ins inspirational work and some more uh, photo and video-oriented content after that. Uh, as a reminder, uh, if you are new to Lumix Live, if this was the first one that you've ever watched with us, make sure to like and subscribe to the Lumix Cameras channel. Uh, it helps us out tremendously. Make sure to hit the bell icon on the videos so that you get notifications when we are uh, going live and releasing new content. Uh, there is always awesome new content being produced by our channel, by all of the other Lumix channels out there, by our ambassadors. So make sure to get on the lists and start following everybody uh, and keep informed there. Uh, last thing to remind everybody about is that uh, Lumix Pro Services uh, set up here, at least in the United States. Again, I can only speak for the United States because I'm only a U.S. representative for the company, but uh, the red, uh, red service level is a free service level, so make sure to get yourself registered on that if you own a Lumix camera. Uh, and uh, take a look at what the... Um, the Platinum series uh, gives you as well. It's, uh, it is a paid service, but the uh, bar to get into it is much, much lower. Uh, and that gets you some really, really cool uh, advantages there. Uh, with that, again, thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you, Emma, for joining us. And we will see you all next week. Take care.